What's up guys? Today we're going to be going over some cheap and affordable motorcycle gear, primarily for beginners, but this is also for anybody that is on a budget and just trying to get proper gear for your motorcycle. It's one of the most important things to get when you get your motorcycle. A lot of people overlook it or don't even consider it. And it's definitely an additional cost you have to consider when you start motorcycling. It's not like, you know, mountain biking where all you need is a cheap little helmet or skateboarding where you basically don't even need a helmet. When you ride a motorcycle, you absolutely need a helmet and protective gear. Um, in this video, we're going to be covering helmets, but not in depth. If you guys want to see a more in depth video of the helmets, I have an actual dedicated video of my two helmets I have. This is also an HJC C10. Be sure to check that video out if you guys want the full helmet video. Today we're gonna be doing brief overview of the helmets. We're gonna be doing gloves. We're gonna be doing jackets. I got two jackets. <laughs> I, I spent a little too much on the, on the gear, uh, essentially, when I started. I was a little, uh, little gung-ho with buying gear. And I'll show you guys one example of a good shoe that I wear, as well as some pants, which I'm wearing right now. So yeah, to get started, we'll just do a quick overview of your helmet. You, want, you basically just want to get a full-faced um, dot-rated helmet. You can see right there, DOT, you want a dot-rated helmet, and you want your helmet to fit you. Um, so my head is a size medium head. Be sure to try them on and make sure the size fits you. This is also a size medium helmet from AGV. This is the AX8 Evo, and you can probably get one for cheap if you find one. I don't know if they make these anymore because it's a relatively older helmet, but this is a moto style, and this is a street or cruiser style helmet. So just decide what kind of helmet you want to get. If you want more information on the full review and in-depth uh, video on these, be sure to check it out on my channel, like I said. So yeah, you, you definitely want to get a helmet, and if you have the extra money, you know, go ahead and get yourself a carbon fiber helmet. If you're thinking about doing recording and also having the Cardo system, that's another accessory that I would recommend for uh, beginners or anybody riding is you need to communicate with uh, your friends or if you want to listen to music, it's almost impossible to fit headphones inside a standard motorcycle helmet because they will just damage your ears, basically. I tried to put my Power Beats on and then put my helmet on and I you know dang near ruptured my uh, ear or whatever so it was not cool it, did, it was in i was in pain so i do, do not recommend that i recommend getting yourself whether a cardo or uh what's the other brand seno or something i forget the other name of the brand but um definitely recommend getting one of those too so this video is not sponsored by any any of these companies guys i'm just going to go over the gear i've bought in the last like six months I got myself a Honda Grom and have been getting into motorcycling pretty regularly the past like five months or whatnot. And so now I'm pretty set on gear. I have almost two of everything. So I'm just going to give you guys a little example of how to go either on a really tight budget or if you want to spend a little more and get something a little nicer. So yeah, so that's the little review of the helmets. Now we're going to start into gloves. Right here we got the in-bike gloves from Amazon which these are my girlfriends and she rides with these and she doesn't have any problems with them. Motorcycle gloves are supposed to have the little knuckle um, protection there in case you fall. That's usually what happens is you fall on your hand or your knuckle. So, and then you want some good protection underneath on the palm area. And that's what these have as well. Pretty good gloves. Um, I don't think they're my size. Yeah, they're a little small, but they feel pretty nice and light. I do like that about them. They are like light and you can feel more of your hand. Um, and I think these are like pretty cheap, like they're pretty cheap. Um, so yeah, this is a, a good cheap example of a pretty decent glove to get you started. If you want to spend a little more, go ahead and get the Alpine stars. I think these are the, uh, I forget what the name, but if you just type in Alpine stars, motorcycle glove, you'll probably find this exact one. It kind of has a cool carbon fiber look right there on it and, uh, on the knuckles and they are actual, uh, leather. So you can, uh, break into them. I'm still kind of breaking into mine. I haven't been riding a whole lot, but they feel great. They feel really sturdy. I feel like my hand's very protected. One thing, you, one thing to note is you don't want to put them on too tight. Um, sometimes I'll like be in a hurry and I'll just be putting them on tight. And then that kind of uh, inhibits your wrist from movement. You don't have as good movement when you put them on too tight. So that's one thing I've noticed. 
These are great gloves. Alpine Stars, you're going to be spending a little more money. It's definitely more of a high-end brand for motorcycle gear, but with the gloves, I wanted to splurge a little bit and get something really nice, and so I'm glad I did. Um, Alpine Stars definitely knocks it out of the park with uh, these gloves. You can find them on Amazon. I need to get links in my description so you guys can uh, get some of the stuff, so I'll be looking into how to do that soon. Um, and then jackets. So I got two jackets here. We got the Reacts jacket from Revzilla, which is where I bought it. And I actually don't know exactly what uh, kind of uh, what the specific name of this jacket is, but I wanted to get a jacket that had visibility, the high vis yellow. And this is what I bought originally. And it's really well made. It's got all kinds of zippers and connections here. You can tighten your elbows right here, buttons. It's a summer riding jacket, so it's meant for you know warmer temperatures. It has a little layer underneath that I took out, um, but it's very comfortable. My only gripe is it's hard for me to tighten around the wrist area if I want. I like I don't like having that space right there. I don't know why it just kind of bothers me, but that's really my only gripe. Other than that, me hanging out right here in this jacket, it's very comfortable. It is a mesh jacket. That's one thing you'll notice when you're looking at jackets. There's mesh, there's winter jackets, there's summer jackets. Mesh is the summer and it's where air literally flows through your body and you feel the air. And in the summer, that's nice, but in the winter time, that is not what you want. So this is technically a summer jacket. And then over here, I got myself, my coworker was telling me, he's like, yeah, I went on Amazon and I found my fly racing jacket for like, you know, 60% off or something. And so he's like, you got to buy it. And I was like, yeah, I do. And so I bought it. I don't really need two motorcycle jackets, but it's nice to have this one as like a winter jacket because it has like an insulated quilted vest. That's really nice for when it gets cold and all winter long, even though I'm in Arizona, I'm in Northern Arizona, it gets really cold. And this jacket is really good. And it's honestly fits me perfectly. Honestly, such a good jacket. So S jacket was like, I think 120 and this jacket was like 175. I think that was around the price range. This is definitely the more high end, nicer jacket, but still not high end. If you want high end, you, you're going to be spending a lot more. Um, but for pretty budget friendly, you can get a good jacket for like 150 to 200, I would say. Um, a lot of people don't like the padding, but I don't mind it. So you can take out the padding. Motorcycle jackets, sometimes they have chest padding, they have usually have elbow padding, and then of course they have shoulder padding. So you kind of feel like you're an NFL linebacker out there on the streets. But that's good because when you do crash, you're going to want that padding. Um, and it is kind of uncomfortable to reach around like that or whatever, but it's fine. I mean, unless you're, if you're on a sport bike, you're more bent over anyway. And so it's like they're designed, to, they think about all that kind of stuff. So definitely got to get a good jacket. Jacket, gloves, helmet, those are the three absolute essentials for when it comes to gear. So those are some good examples of that. And then pants right here, I'm just wearing some jeans basically that are pretty thick and you don't want them too baggy. If you wear baggy, it's gonna be going crazy in the wind. A lot of people just wear sweatshirts, but if you see them going fast, you see their sweatshirts are basically tearing apart because it's cotton and it's loose and it's just in the wind. and uh, you don't want that, but I guess sweatshirts are comfortable. So I'm, you know, do you do you, you know, if you want to ride in a sweatshirt, that's fine. And I'm sure I'm going to be riding in a sweatshirt too. Once I uh, start riding a lot, because these jackets are fine, but nothing's more comfortable than a sweatshirt. Right. Um, and then as far as shoes, let me grab my shoes. So right here, I have some 510 mountain biking shoes. These are the 510 trail cross by Adidas. And these are mountain biking specific shoes. They have like traction on the bottom and um, a bunch of protection and you can hike in these. But these actually work great for riding my Grom. Um, basically everything that would you could do on a mountain bike, you might need to be able to do on a Grom, like pushing your bike around or whatever, or you need extra protection around the toes. You need solid heels. This is basically like a hiking boot, hiking shoe. Um, so I'd recommend a boot for sure. But if you want something a little lighter and you don't want to be walking around in heavy boots all day, then get yourself uh, something similar to this, like some sort of heavy duty hiking shoe or something that's gonna give your foot protection. And these ones have ventilation, so that's gonna be nice in the summer because boots would obviously be really hot. But of course, 
a lot of people would ride with actual riding boots. And if you look on Revzilla, you will see tons of riding boots for sale. Um, so yeah, guys, that's about it. Uh, just simple, basic gear. Like I was saying earlier in the video, um, if you do are, or if you plan on riding with friends or whatever, get yourself one of the intercom systems. Definitely very useful. Um, you can communicate, you can listen to music, all that good stuff. So that's about it for this video. Be sure to get yourself a good helmet, of course. Be sure to get yourself uh, a phone mount. That's another thing. I would recommend getting the quad lock. That's what I have now. You can mount it right on your handlebars and then just put your phone there. That's way better than having your phone in your pocket and then trying to pull it out when you're riding to either look at it or answer a call or look at the time or whatnot. Having a quad lock or some sort of mount for your phone on your handlebars seems unsafe, but honestly, that's a pretty smart idea because it's way better than reaching into your pocket and un having to unzip it and stuff and find it. Um, and then your phone is just safe on the handlebars the whole time. So yeah, guys, basic gear 2024, pretty affordable stuff right here. You, you got to You got to get most of it. That's for sure. And, uh, Thanks for watching. If you guys like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you guys subscribe for more videos. Make sure you check out my shorts. I've been trying to do a lot of funny ones for you guys. So um, I appreciate you watching. Safe riding. Stay vigilant. Peace.